tape? Huh? Do you mind if I put you on tape? No, you... Okay. Channel... Because, uh... uh my history, history Channel has me on. <laughs> You're kidding me. No. Your TV star. Cool. Oh, yeah. Uh... The Chinese discovered it, and when they first found it, they said it burnt too quickly. They did not confine it for a while. When they confined it, when you compacted it and confined it, then it explodes. Well, that's, that's really that's all an explosion is, a rapid release of gases. So, yeah, you can dump it out of a gun shell and yeah. pull it right there, it goes poof. Yeah, it goes poof. It doesn't make any noise, it doesn't do anything. But you could find it in that gun shell, and then it does do things. So DuPont learned how to make black powder in France from Lavoisier, the French chemist. And when they came here, he bought some, and the powder wasn't very good, and it was very expensive, so he said, I can make better black powder than this yeah. So he made, started making it. They came down here in 1802 because of the of the uh, water, water power. power. And that's all the power we had in those days, was water power. So you let the water flow from a high spot like this back to the river at 17-foot fall right now, at this point. Uh, <clears throat> over the water wheel, as they originally did, you got your power to make your black powder. Later on, the turbines came in, so we have a turbine down here. We'll go down there and turn the turbine on. Where he is. Over the mountainside. Yeah. Let me see. All right. Well, anyway, to get the water in the mill race, there's a dam about three eighths of a mile upstream. The water stays with what's behind the dam, stays at that height all the way through here, unless we open the gate. So this is level. The river continues downhill, and at this point, if a little over two gallons of water will give us a horse power. How deep is this race? The, the race is only about uh, six or seven feet deep now, but normally it would be 12, 10 feet. But we got silt in here. In fact, somewhere back down in here, we got too much of it. It's just about up to the surface, so mm. it should be cleaned out if we you aren't doing it. Well, we got enough water to run the turbine, now that's all that counts. Here's where we make the black powder. The three ingredients, charcoal, sulfur, and saltpeter. Sulfur and charcoal? And saltpeter. So what's saltpeter? Potassium nitrate. Where'd they get that? Bat droppings. Bat droppings. Oh. Guana. Is, is there any other way? Or they, they depend on, 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 uh, on bat Well, that's where it came from originally. I, I don't know whether you can synthesize it now or not, you know? It's just potassium and, and oxygen. Yeah, they'd probably find a way in the, in the laboratory to make yeah, it. Yeah, probably. Yeah, the Civil War, they used to do it in a cave. Well, that's that's the guano, yeah. The guano and uh, put salt in it. Yeah. And, and then charcoal. charcoal. Charcoal is... How much does one of those wheels weigh? Eight to ten tons. How'd you get them in here? You know any other hard questions? <laughs> well, now... But you just throw that stuff in there. And let you, it... you put up to 600 pounds of those three things in there. Go up and open the gate. And when that starts running, that crushes that. It also mixes because behind each wheel is a there's a uh, plow. There'll be yeah, a little plow that. on that wheel right there. What's underneath? A, a, a flat iron? Yes, it is. So you want to be very careful you don't tilt those wheels in any way. Because if the two of them hit, you get a spark, it goes to boom. Is that what's in there right now, like uh, gunpowder, or is that just dirt? That is 100% absolutely the best imitation black powder you ever saw. <laughs> All right. How do you know when you got when it's done? Well, that's one of the things that's a mystery to some of us that are living today. The they knew that we don't. Like the, we're on the corner, so you just when yeah, the yeah, when to pull the plug and all that. That's right. Now, if you look at the TV screen, you can see how clear that is. Oh, yeah. Going. Oh, gosh, look how clear that is. With just that little bit of light, too. Mm -hmm. Well, it's on night vision, too. Yeah. 
Thanks, wow, sir. that's really good. Well, you do keep it wet when you're making it because you're exposed to 451 degrees and you've got friction developing heat in there, so you add water to it. So sometimes it, it does and it sticks to the bottom of the wheels. I added water in there this morning. And sometimes you can see it stick to the wheels, like right there, right in there. You got some black powder in there. No. No, but it's a good imitation black. Powder. Looks like pulsed, really. It's got some. It's got some some carbon in there, and it's got some little. No, no sulfur. I don't think. I don't know what's all. What all's in there? I wonder if you smell that sulfur mechanism, like you do in Yellowstone Park. Ah, uh, you probably could. Well, like the rotten eggs. Yeah, that hot sulfide. Yeah, yeah. There'd be a difference if you can put it behind me. You can really see down the barrel. I'm surprised they didn't have a postcard down there in the souvenir shop. I guess they don't, do they? That's a good idea. They have one. You see down the barrel? Yeah. Yeah, that's nice in there. I can't. Uh, I don't know if my camera is going to put it there, but I got a lot of This is a turbine. This is what's out there inside that wooden drum. You have the drum around it, the floor here. Water comes in, it can only go out through these holes. And these holes are directing that water in all the way around there. When they get inside, they hit these moving blades right here. And turn that. That's the little gear, the big gear. Over here, we have another little gear, big gear, which runs out rather slowly. This equipment would also be over here, so you'd be running both mills with one water motor. Now, if the powder in this building blows up, we have two solid walls, this one right here, and this one three feet thick, stone, and an airspace. So if this blows, hopefully this won't, but there's no guarantee. And also this building, and this, all of them are, are designed with a very lightweight roof. You can see in this case it's sheet metal. In the early days, it could have been uh, just regular wood shingles. A light wooden wall here, so that if it does blow, the light sheet metal and the light wooden wall go out that way. All goes out. We've got back wall six feet thick. That's the reason it's designed. That's the reason it's designed. So the explosion goes that way and everybody back here is safe. And if, if these pieces do as they're supposed to, just deflect the explosion out, and blows this off, and we just come back and put the roof on and go back and put the roof. This, this is 451 degrees. In that case, don't light a cigarette. <laughs> yeah. Alright, this is a type of tester. We don't know that DuPont ever used one like this, but, but there were drawings in his paper, so we know he, he knew about this type. Very simple, we put a fuse in. We add black powder in here, and this is the real black powder. This is the stuff that's made in Mendon, Louisiana. It's the only place it makes in the United States. 4H, 2H. <laughs> this is 3F. 3F. Yep. There are five sizes of it. Can you get that in there? I had it before. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. Five sizes of that. About this the is the medium you... size, so there's two bigger, two smaller. Now we put it back over here. Got the amount you put in a, a, a muzzle loader. Yeah, that's what they use. The only trouble with the black powder is that it smokes. So if you're, if you're in a war and the guy's over there firing at you, you know exactly where he is because of the smoke. Aha. Uh Aha -huh. uh -huh is right. This is not a smokeless powder. Now, if I light it right now, it's going to get flame and smoke, and that's it. If I put a top on it like that, now I've confined it. When I light it, the rapid release of gases, which is, a, is an explosion, is going to push this roof off, or this top off. How far around here it goes, or how high up that goes, is how good it is. So we have to put the top back on. I have to put it over here in this plastic container. Let's get 
good 1800 plastic, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to blow my camera. <laughs> yeah, you want to get that out of the way. <laughs> all right, I've got to get a match. Now, we have all kinds of safety rules for preventing explosions over there. We have one safety rule today. Everybody's going to be fine. Are you going to shoot this one? I have it on now. Okay. Kind of hard for the still camera to get this. Everybody ready? Fire. Fire in the hole. Well, Hopefully. Too much, too much hot air around here. Flash in the pan. Right. There we go. Okay. Okay. There we are. Now it's fire in the hole. Sheesh. That's a blue thing all the way around. Yes, it is. Thing was, it didn't make that sharp noise. In the winter time, when there's no humidity, it makes a lot more noise. Now, aren't you glad you didn't have your finger in there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it went around and hit the weight actually, and rolled the weight over. It could have gone that far, so it's pretty good in my pocket. I mean, some of it won't, won't, won't push it all the way around. Well, it hits the weight. Oh, yours hit the weight. Yeah. Now, if the weight weren't there. Comes around, you hit that weight. Sometimes it pushes it around. Sometimes it well, this is easy because I don't have to lift 300 pounds. So closing is no problem. Now, how high will that gate go? It'll go quite a bit higher, but if you do that, you're going to run that damn thing too fast. And you're going to start throwing black powder out and around. That's why I run it at a slow speed so I don't. Throw it around. The package that you send it out, then they, did they have to grind it up? Uh, or yes. Well, they chipped it. Chipped it. After, after it was pressed. We haven't been uh, firing up the steam, but today the boiler inspector showed up at about 8.30 and he wanted to see steam. So a couple of Hagley technicians fired it up for his purposes and then we kind of let it go out after that. Just too hot. Um, Did it pass? Pardon me? Did it pass? Oh, he has several things to do. He has to come back. They usually inspect it during the winter time when the exhibit is shut down. And they come in and what was this used for? Steam engine? Well, the uh, steam engines were used uh, for uh, about a 25 year period here at Hagley uh, to supplement mechanical power uh, during uh, times of the year when the water wheels were either frozen up or we had uh, droughts. Um, the, of course, water was free, but the uh, winter weather would cause freeze ups and they it would shut down operations uh, for the extent of the freeze up. So, uh, manufacturers in general started looking to steam engines to operate the uh, shaft systems during that. Right. So, How did they get the power from here all the way down to the. Well, this, this particular building was built to, to house the steam engine to power equipment in the pack house. And they had nine of these engines here over a 25 year period. And the pack house stood about 70 feet up the hill. So uh, the water wheel that powered it 
and it's located just a little bit downstream from here. So they have shafting running all over the place around here from water wheels and some other steam engines. That's what I mean. If they want to keep in full operation, have a steam engine here and here and here all the way down well, the line. Well, they did. They, like I said, they had nine of them. And, oh, uh, they so this is just one of them. This is just one of them, yeah. And uh, another advantage of the steam engine was they could locate them in areas that weren't really near the river, you know, oh, yeah. remote. But anyway, uh, what happened was that uh, uh, by about the 1890s, the uh, water turbine came on the scene and it replaced the steam engine. It wasn't nearly as subject to freeze up and drought as the wheels. So I don't know whether you saw the uh, water turbine exhibit mm -hmm. down here in the way. So yeah, the wheels and then further down is all the uh, turbine. Right, they're down in the river. And they can take water from below the ice and the race, put it through the turbine and discharge it below the ice in the river. So they weren't nearly as affected by freezing. And uh, the same right. as the old the wrist mills that they had, some of them had an indoor wheel. Yeah. But they were running very good size. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but the water turbine also uh, was hydrodynamically much more efficient and use the velocity of the water, not just the weight of the water to drive it, so technologically much more advanced. Um, I can pull this uh, engine over by hand and you can see the belt move in some abandoned textile facility in Philadelphia and restored it. Have any idea what the name of the place was? The textile? No, I don't. No. I don't. It's I a pretty heavy pipe there, so it has to have all that pressure. Uh, coming over there to the piston? Well, that's uh, that's actually wooden insulation around the pipe. Does this thing have a whistle on it, sir? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can see the pipe coming out of the top of the dome. That's the, oh, okay. that's the uh, you know, the regular steam size steam pipe. It's inside the insulation. That has to withstand all the pressure of that steam. Right. Well, we only operate about 40 to 60 PSI. And, uh, um, I'm not sure whether um, in its working days whether they ran that high or not. Uh, the engine won't run when they can less than about uh, 20. And, uh, that big wheel moves around. Yeah, well, cool. that's, that's just it. I can, uh, uh, I can pull this over with my hand. And, uh, it normally runs about 60 RPM. And I can't, I can't, I can't <laughs> pull it at 60 RPM, but I mean, you know, once you overcome that initial inertia, I'm well, sorry, it doesn't uh, Now, what is that rod firing over there? Okay, that line up in the overhead there? Yeah. That, that went out the back wall up to the back house. Oh, okay. And um, they, you know, they had uh, pull-up block type bearings and couplings in between. And they had the pull blocks on 